Hi, we're going to talk about challenging lack of personal jurisdiction. So the first question that we're going to deal with is who can challenge lack of personal jurisdiction? The most important thing you can remember is that this is a personal issue. So only the person who has this issue can bring it up. You can't raise this problem for someone else. Um, and the court certainly cannot. So what if there are two defendants in the lawsuit and only one challenges lack of personal jurisdiction? Well, basically, the one who doesn't challenge lack of personal jurisdiction is in it and has effectively consented. So even if technically there is not a basis for personal jurisdiction under traditional grounds, don't forget that one of the grounds to have personal jurisdiction is that defendant consents. So someone who's not aware that there really shouldn't be jurisdiction over them could actually end up effectively consenting and losing that defense. So how can you properly challenge PJ? The most important thing to remember is you get one and only one chance to do it. So you better do it correctly. You don't get multiple times to repeat your challenge only once. So how do you challenge lack of PJ on your one time? There's basically two ways called direct versus collateral attack. But what do these things mean? Well, direct attack basically is when you're sued, you in that lawsuit directly challenge whether or not the plaintiff can sue you in that forum. Usually you have to raise this at the beginning of the lawsuit. If you lose that um, argument, then you have to just keep going and litigate on the merits unless there's some other uh, uh, procedural basis. But generally, you don't get to immediately appeal. You just have to keep going. Um, on the other hand, with the collateral attack, what happens is that when the plaintiff initially sues the defendant, the defendant does nothing. The defendant doesn't challenge it at all, and then you end up with a default judgment against the defendant, i.e. an automatic win on paper for the plaintiff. But considering this is in a forum where the defendant thinks there is no personal jurisdiction, the plaintiff usually has to do a second lawsuit to enforce the judgment of the first that's on paper. And this second lawsuit is going to be in a state where the plaintiff is sure has personal jurisdiction over the defendant. And it's only at the second stage where the defendant is going to bring up the issue of lack of personal jurisdiction. So one important thing to think about is um, the full faith and credit clause of the Constitution and its relevance to personal jurisdiction. Is it relevant to direct attacks? No. Why not? Well, basically, this provision says that sister courts, different courts, have to enforce the judgment of other courts. But there is one exception. If the judgment is unconstitutional, then the judgment doesn't have to be enforced. So when you have a direct attack, there is no other sister court involved. There's only just the one court. So full faith and credit doesn't come up there. But if you remember for collateral attacks, we are talking about a second lawsuit to try to enforce a first judgment. So that is where full faith and credit would be relevant. And the basic bottom line is the second court will not enforce the judgment if it is in fact true that PJ in the first lawsuit was unconstitutional because there is that exception to enforcing judgments. So if it was unconstitutional, judgment is not enforced, but that is the only basis that can be raised on collateral attack. You can't challenge the merits at all because the only exception to full faith and credit is that it was unconstitutional. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's think about direct challenges to um, PJ in terms of where you do it, in state or federal court. 
So if you're talking about a direct challenge, it could be any basis, not just that it's unconstitutional. It could also be that there was no PJ because um, the defendant, for example, didn't fall within the state's long arm. So any reason that there is no personal jurisdiction over the defendant, you can bring up. But you should be aware that the rules for direct challenges in state and federal court are a little bit different. State courts are not all the same. Each state is its own sovereign, so they have different rules. One thing that you should be on the watch for are state courts that follow the special appearance rule. This means that in these courts, um, you have to make a special appearance in court to challenge lack of PJ and lack of PJ only. If you bring up anything else, you are considered to have turned that appearance into a general appearance and thereby consented to jurisdiction in that forum. So you can't bring up the merits, only lack of PJ. Federal courts, on the other hand, all follow the same rules because the federal rules of civil procedure guide all federal courts. And in all federal courts, the special appearance problem does not exist. The federal rules actually say that you can bring up all defenses that you have at the same time that fall under the same provision of Rule 12. But you have to do it in a timely way. So you're you have to basically file a timely motion to dismiss on lack of PJ or any other grounds before the time to file your answer. If you don't do it in a timely way, you lose that challenge. And although technically you could mention lack of PJ as a defense in your answer, an answer doesn't ask the court to do anything, so that would not be an effective way to get rid of your lawsuit. So if you want the lawsuit to go away, you need to file a motion to dismiss saying there's lack of PJ and any other reason that you think would support the court making the case go away, and the court will rule on that. Hopefully that helps now clear up how to challenge PJ.